David Murray, also known as the 8-Bit Guy on his YouTube channel, has released his third game, Attack of the Petsky Robots. Originally programmed on the Commodore PET, Commodore's first home computer released in 1977 using only text-based graphics, aka the Petsky characters. You know, those other symbols that are printed onto the Commodore 64's keys. David not only managed to port the game over to the Commodore 64, but enhance it too. A story that David covers on his channel and in the game's manual. Both are well worth watching and reading before you dive in. The story goes that sometime in the future, the robots rise up and try to take over human settlements on various planets. Your job is to seek out these 8-bit minions of Skynet and destroy them. Attack of the Petsky Robots is an isometric action puzzle game where you will bomb, shoot, explore, search and move objects such as crates and chairs to your advantage and try to destroy every robot on the stage. Once every robot has been destroyed, you can then make your way to the transporter room, step on the platform and complete the stage. The pistol is your standard weapon. Then you have the plasma gun, which is much more powerful and has a blast radius, so watch out. The EMP, which stuns the robots for a few seconds, and if they're over water, kills them instantly. An excellent detail, I thought. The time bomb that once placed explodes in a few seconds and was probably my most used item as I conserved most of my pistol and plasma ammo for the harder enemies or when things went wrong. Lastly, the magnet. Place it in the path of a patrolling robot and it'll cause them to go haywire. There are also movable canisters that you can shoot creating explosions. A great way to deal a lot of damage whilst holding on to your items. The robots come in three forms. The first and weakest are the hoverbots. They won't attack you on sight, but will chase you if you attack them. One well placed time bomb, however, is enough to end their existence. Next, we have the roller bots. They don't chase you at all, but will attack as soon as you're on the same horizontal or vertical plane. Going toe to toe with them isn't advised. Lastly, there's the evil bots. Two or three hits and you're dead. Game over, start again. They're usually placed behind locked doors and it's best to have a strategy before engaging one. While you can't use a joystick due to the number of actions you can perform, the game feels so natural and intuitive on the keyboard that I find it hard to care. An absolute masterstroke by David. Though a Super Nintendo controller adapter is included in the physical edition. The soundtrack suits the game perfectly, upbeat with some nice melodies that don't become irritating after 5 minutes. The sound effects are outstanding, from a nice gritty explosion, or the swishing of electric doors, to the echoing whoop of the plasma gun. The game sounds like a carnival. David said, first and foremost, that he wanted to create a game that's fun to play, that's more complex than the average Donkey Kong clone, yet not so much so that it takes weeks to beat. Well, mission accomplished in my opinion. I'm shocked at how good this game is. Running around searching desks, crates, cabinets and beds for items, selecting the weapon you think best suits the current situation, Placing items and moving objects to create your own wily e. coyote traps, the game feels so much bigger than it is. And what I like the most is that there's no right way to solve a particular problem. You could watch five different people play the same stage and every one of them would come up with their own solutions. It's easy to pick up, fun to play, sprawling levels, buildings with multiple floors. If you own a Commodore 64, then it's simply mandatory. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.